Hello and welcome at Dota 2 Asia Championship and here with me is a man from the capital letter A, RTZ, are also known as Artur Babaya from Evil Geniuses. So hello sir, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing pretty well. I just fixed my sleep schedule actually, so I'm sleeping a good, you know, eight, nine hours. Before I was like sleeping between three to five hours. It's pretty bad, so I, you know, my jet lag is over. I'm ready. So this tight sleeping schedule also should be the reason of your maybe, let's just say, underperformance in the group uh, No stage. excuses, you know, I mean, it sucks to be jet lag, but it's kind of our responsibility to appear, you know, at our best condition possible. Um, you know, I can't always fix my jet lag, but I do my best and it just didn't work out for me this time around. Um, this is like, I've been to China a lot of times and this is probably the worst it's been for me. I'm not even sure why. I, I actually have no idea why it's so bad this time. But still, you, today you had lots of scrims and are you ready for your tomorrow's matchup? By the way, remind me, who, what team will you play against? Uh, we're playing uh, Best Auto 1 versus Wings. I think that's the only match we're going to play where it's a late night match. It's like 8 p.m. local time, so it's pretty late. Uh, still, you will have a chance to sort of smash them for all that, all that TI in the, stuff. In our, in our history so far, when I've been on this team, it's like we've, we've beaten them every time almost. I don't know if we've lost them, but we may have. But from my recent memory, we've beat them like at the Summit, at the Boston Major, and uh, this is our third time playing them here. I think it's our third time, yeah. And it's always been like elimination matches, so I think maybe we're pretty good for swings, at least results-wise, and we do pretty well versus them. Generally, we feel pretty nice about it. So, of course, the worst part about it is the best out of one, so someone's going to come in with maybe a pre-made strategy and it'll shake things up a little bit, it's just how you adapt to the situation. But I don't know, I'm just collecting different opinions on best of one, and some players think that best of one, it's a good opportunity to, add, to get some sort of boost of adrenaline, or some speed focus, something like that. So does it work for you? Personally, I just hate this kind of stuff. I, I just hate that... Uh, for how I understand Dota is, I think uh, um, the per the team that plays the most amount of matches is like and wins is like the best team. But the kind of formats that like uh, especially for the Boston Major, it's like uh, you don't have to play that many games and you can still win the tournament. And matchups matter a lot since it's single limb too, and all these kinds of factors I would prefer not to have. But uh, for the fans, I think it's pretty nice for them. They're able to, you know, it's just like for the players. Personally, I don't like it at all. I wish that it was not like this. I wish that we didn't have to like best out of ones in this kind of group stage. But I can see the sort of like from uh, the person who runs the tournament from their side. It's like the fans love it and they would maybe the stadium sells out more and they get more money. So that's why they prefer this kind of stuff. Well, f on one hand, we have like less content because we have less matches, but as you have said, since the tight schedule, everything, everyone manages to watch every game. Yeah. It's so damn intense and pleasant to watch. Yeah. So, and speaking about the after gaming activities, um, how, are you, how do you usually like maintain your level of play? Because different players prefer solo pubs, some play solo ranked or team ranked. So what's your preferable? mode to play in your free time? Um, whenever um, we're not scrimming or we don't have any official matches and we're on break, I guess, I always just, I just play pubs all day. Um, usually my mood depends, it's probably a bad thing, but my mood depends of the day because I play like 12 hours straight. So if I have like five bad pubs in that day, I'll be pretty cranky the whole day and I'll probably not want to play more or I'll force myself into it. And that's where I go my massive MMR loss. Like in China or in San Francisco, I lost like 600 MMR in two, in I think it was three and a half days, four days, something like that. I just like lost every game. I went down this like crazy path, you know, I played, I just started my day, you know, we're on breaks, no scrims today. So I just come into the, I come in like, I wake up like 10 a.m. I'm yeah, pretty excited for some pubs. And then I just lose every single game that day. And then I just keep playing because I'm like, I have to win eventually. And then I played like 18 hours straight and I just lost like, out of 23 games I played, I probably lost like 21. So... So I can't stop myself sometimes. I just want to, you know, I need to like play, win some games. So it's probably very unhealthy for me to play that much realistically and probably not very good for my mind as well. But uh, I enjoy playing Dota a lot. So that's what keeps me going. You know, some even though when I'm like the games are really clowny, you still and you're feeding, you still mm -hmm. have some fun playing them. You just, you know, the all chat NA memes and stuff. So it's always it's just fun to play Dota. So it's really nice to see that all that stuff about fun and passion, but you shouldn't go to casinos with this type of oh, attitude yeah, because yeah. You, you don't, you simply don't know when to stop. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's probably accurate, yeah. 
But as for, okay, fun, let it be. But as for the skill uh, maintenance, what do you think? Can solo pubbing just help you if you're not a mid player or a carry? I think it, I think all the best pub or all the best players in general play a lot of pubs. I think uh, there's a lot to learn from pubs aside from individual play. I think you're just keeping in tune with your with the meta. There's like different servers have different metas, so it's kind of like you. How I look at it is like your knowledge is kind of related to your MMR, sort of like uh, your understanding of the game. Because uh, even though you're not a core player or you're a support player, it, you're still able to understand the game when you play any role. Like you're able to see like this is what like this Monkey King is like doing this and this. This is pretty hard, you know. And then you go to your team. You tell me, yeah, I just played this pub and this guy did this and it felt like, pretty hard to do something here. And like then it kind of just you learn a lot. You may not win the game. But it doesn't really matter. You're the MMR exact, I guess I should change that value. It's not like your MMR is relative to your knowledge of the game, but it's just how many pubs you play is relative to your knowledge of the game, I think. Of course, you could just like uh, watch games all day, but I still prefer just playing. Playing, it seems like it's easier to learn and you get more knowledge and you actually experience stuff. While like looking at someone do it is not as, uh, I, I guess, effective. That's how I looked at it, at least. I always preferred doing something rather than watching it. Of course, I still watch replays all the time, and sometimes when I go my tilt streak, I stop myself a little, you know, and watch a replay, try to unwind, watch some like Grey's Anatomy. But uh, for me, it's mostly I just play pubs. And since you mentioned Monkey King, so what's your opinion on the current state of this hero? Because like OP, broken, shit stuff. I have heard so many different opinions. I think he's just straight up. Uh, imbalanced in terms of the way he makes you play dota he kind of he's like uh, everything you'd want in a support hero he's he uh, has a lot of pressure in a lane it's he's very scary off the map because you don't know where he is the only knowledge you have is like how if you see him jump from a tree because you have vision in that area um he's he's getting to the point that everyone's played against him so people are going to be trying some stuff so i think in the group stages of this tournament he was pretty op like no one knew like what he really did had an idea they they tried it in a pub or something but there are some chinese teams that are super good with that hero and they kind of i feel like they kind of showed its true strength so now it's just up to the teams to try to counter it but as far as my opinion on it right now i feel like it just does way too much i think it's like it reminds me of it's a good example i think ursary when he just came out he had like mm -hmm. uh, he could pull people and stuff like his things were switched it was like he just does too much and uh I think he'll probably get nerfed again. I think uh, probably, I don't know if he'll get nerfed after this tournament. He might in preparation for Kiev Major. So I hope I hope he does get nerfed because as I said, I just think he does way too much. And speaking of your team, recently you have like three months ago, you have had some sort of restructurization. You have a new CEO and new, I, let's just say, balance of responsibilities. So Peter told me that, for example, Universe is highly involved in making different decisions on the team. And what about you? So do you try to make some impact on each year or just you? Now nah, let me just have my cut and have fun. I think just me, Crypt and Zai, we're just, we don't really make any executive decisions. We, we like sometimes get involved really, but only when we're like asked about it. Otherwise, I think it's just uh, up to those guys. We're just kind of the lower end. We just play the Dota and stuff, and uh, we don't really get involved. And since you again have a cooperation with Twitch, no Panda TV slavery, finally. Uh, what's about streaming? Because at first, I don't know, you hated pop uh, streaming, like, definitely. Yeah, I, think, I think what changed about streaming for me is I did it so much that I... Uh, got burnt out I guess that's the correct way of saying it I just did it so much and like I was having such bad pubs and when I like after I finished the pub I would just tab and see all this stupid shit and I was just like what's the point man like this is such a waste of time so I just turned off my stream and just played pubs and they, they went better it just I think it's just relative to how my pubs are for the day it's not really streaming so much that annoys me it's like a combination if i'm if i'm already pissed off because some guy's throwing my game and i tab in and people are flaming me for like walking down mid at 20 minutes when this guy's like 0 13 and like i just get mad i'm like uh don't you guys see this guy he's just ruining my game i don't want to play anymore it's just um a bit annoying when uh, some people don't see my perspective of course i see theirs they're, just, they're they're here to see me play dota but this guy's throwing my game and yeah, I should always try my best and such but I mean at a certain point in the game if I feel like it's like 
completely unwinnable or this guy is completely not interested in winning the game, I'll just, I don't want to play anymore either. Might as well save my energy. And that's what I end up doing and just walking down mid and, and people don't like that sometimes and that's fine, but uh, yeah. But do you think that all this intense streaming helped you I don't know, to become mature like really soon after that because you know you started from meme creating, clowning, baby raging and all that stuff and now you're a completely different person. I, I say so too. I, I don't know what happened to me to be honest. I feel like I did kind of change. Uh, just I think uh, I, I think a lot about stuff before it happens at least. That's how I, I assume it is. Maybe it's the opposite. Maybe I just do stuff and it works out. but. Uh, like I, I try to understand the reason for things. I try to figure out like, why are people getting so mad at me for doing this, you know? And then I think about it from their perspective, their idea of me, kind of uh, like how it works in their mind. They're saying they want to see me play pubs, right? So for them, they're disappointed. But uh, I just try to think about stuff that uh, it may like displease some people, it may make them unhappy. So that's probably why it seems like I'm more mature. Maybe I am more mature. It's kind of a process you don't really notice, I think. It just happens. Plus, you actually you live in a harsh environment because all this, all these intense trainings, tournament schedule, everything, it's just great pressure on you. You have to deal with it. Yeah, I, I guess I, I, I don't even think about it that much. I just do my thing, you know? So, yeah, in, that means you're easy to adapt. That's great. Uh, I guess. That's very promising. And again, your streams somehow were connected to People called it strange taste in music, but generally, what are or did you make any, let's just say, recent music discoveries for yourself? Have you found something new, really great to listen to? Well, of course, I've been listening to Drake's new album. I'm sure everybody has, at least that likes Drake. We have no other choice. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's on Spotify, it works in China, exactly. Um, I've been listening to a lot more Future lately. I spammed this one song called High Demand, it's on one of his recent mixtapes. I played that song like eight, like 80 times in a row. I had it on on repeat for some match. So I, uh, nothing really out of the ordinary. It's just kind of hip hop, rap music, uh, whatever I can find in China because I don't have a VPN or anything. Really? No, I don't. God, it's, it's, it's really difficult. I don't it's know. It's rough out here. <laughs> So, and like speaking of some other activities, okay, you play pops, you train a lot, but still, do you have some time for a sort of extra thing like socializing, other games, films, reading? Okay, Grey's Anatomy doesn't count here because Ah, uh, damn. It. I was gonna say, yeah, <laughs> I watch this. I watch, I don't know why, but I watch those corny shows a lot. Like, though, like, I guess the target audience is for like teenagers or like, just like, I know a lot of, uh, a lot of people, moms, if they watch that show, so doesn't make me feel better but I, I like that show a lot and I watch a lot of Scorpion too it's similar to that way it's like a relationship drama um, other stuff I do well whenever I go back from I go back home from like a long boot camp or a tournament or something like that I always just go with my friends uh, I meet up with them most of them are in school so during weekends I it's like the only time I can hang out with them and uh, it's nice to see uh, that my friends are still like we're going different paths in life, but we always, uh, when we have time, we always spend it with some time with each other. It's a nice reality. Um, I'm thankful to have a lot of friends that I've known for like 15 years. So it's pretty nice. Aside from that, I don't know. I don't do that much. It's pretty generic. I just hang out with friends, watch TV, do my job, play Dota, I suppose. Um, I play some For Honor, you know, every now oh, and then. Oh, great stuff. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I was like, I was getting pretty good. I entered this 2v2 tournament with my friend and uh, we got second place. Mm. And uh, But we lost in the grand finals. Like We didn't even win a single round. It was like best out of five. We lost three games and we didn't win a single round in those games. So we got uh, I have a question since now we have new tournament rules. Uh, Peacekeeper is banned. Like, oh, yeah, for, the for good. Isn't it on the Xbox? Something uh, like console only? No, Peacekeeper in the uh, like a class in For Honor. Oh, seriously? Yes, because that so, that's the class I play. It's great class. I don't know. I like to play Peacekeeper, yeah. but uh, people consider him to be a P. No, Bushi is a P. Yeah, I am. And what what characters do you typically play in For Honor? I think uh, I only play I only play Peacekeeper, and I, I played a bit of Warden because like how it was for me is I don't have time to really like learn the game. I just spam. It's like kind of like when I played. Um, 
What game did I play? I was Overwatch. I played Overwatch and I only played Genji. And then I got pretty high well, rating. No, Genji is like skill based. You need lots of skill to play it. Yeah, I spammed that hero. That's the only <laughs> hero. I, that's the only hero I played, man. I I grinded that hero really hard, and then uh, they nerfed him. And I was super high on Omar at the time. I feel like I think I was like, I think the max when I was playing it was like 3.8k, 3.9k Omar, and I was around 3.6. I was like getting up there, or I think the max is like 4k, uh, I was getting up there and then they nerfed Genji and then I just, I fell down, like I went to 2.9k because I couldn't play anything else and then I quit that game and then I went to For Honor and I played some For Honor, I only spam Peacekeeper and they nerfed her a little bit but she's still super strong. Extremely, and her uh, bleeding effects. not... I think the best part about it, at least uh, how I feel when I like, Sometimes they go on the For Honor Reddit, and uh, it's actually similar to the Dota Reddit because no one really knows what they're talking about. But no, but generally community is great because like a couple of weeks ago when you have four v four matches, mm -hmm. it's like total chaos. But now like people treat this For Honor stuff seriously. So yeah, the when two v two aspect, I think it's more serious. The one v one is still like flawed, I, I think, because some classes are just. Like you can, there's like this whole discussion about the turtle meta, and it's super hard for mm -hmm. like, like almost three fourths of the classes to open up a person to actually do damage to them. It's like uh, you can just sit there and do your uh, unblockables and just play parry, like just parry all their attacks. Well, but to think it from the other side, you know, Peacekeeper is a good way to train different uh, sort of reaction and timing for Dota. That's a. Uh, that's actually the, at least how I saw it was that that was like the primary reason I was looking at the classes. I was like. I know, I want to play, this reacting seems pretty cool, so I had a choice of like the three assassins and Berserker looked kind of garbage, I want to mm, say. It's broken because it has infinite chain attack. I mean, no, he's really bad, dude, like he's actually so bad. Um, and what about uh, uh, Orochi, I think? Orochi, yeah, yes, Orochi's really bad too, I think. Um, I just, to be honest, the only reason <laughs> I picked Peacekeeper is because she looked really cool, like she, she's, she's this assassin, you know, she's got daggers, I'm like, yeah, this hero's And the cool helmet. Yeah, she's, she's pretty mysterious, you know. And then I just picked her, and turns out she was just OP, and uh, that's how my, that's how I started playing Peacekeeper, and then I started actually getting pretty good, maybe because I'm pretty naturally good at like reflexes and stuff from Dota, and um, I started playing a lot, and at some point I played against like really top players, like super top players. I think like the Kihu and like Cipher PK guys. Like I don't know if you know them, they're pretty like top tier players. I think. And um, I started losing, and I started losing to these warlords that are like, I, I mm. feel like I couldn't do anything. Like, I, I feel like I have to do some crazy stuff to win, and they can just chill. And at that point, I started losing interest in the game. Um, but in general, so do you think that it has some potential in the future? Because if you have heard about Rainbow Six Siege, yeah. so it, again, it had extremely low start, but developers listen to the community they did all the good stuff for free and now we have like boom 12 million active players wait really that much that's crazy even more than dota yeah, that's that's, that's pretty insane. but still okay for honor won't have that let's, let's i think face uh, it. the direction of the game so far is not going uh, um, at least how i look at the community how i think they think is like they don't like a lot of stuff about the game and the progress of fixing those things isn't too fast so they're having a lot of issues from the community and maybe people are starting to quit and there's like a lot of problems that way and uh, if they don't fix it I think it's only a matter of time before it becomes like sort of an elitist game only where like these like really high skill players just stay in the game and they still play it and then you know they just enjoy the aspect of it but it's, I don't think the growth of the game is gonna like incline anytime soon well unless, um, the, unless the they fix it for the last year and a half we have like the lowering threshold of entry level mm -hmm. let's just say in dota and how do you like does it have any effect as as you see it for for the growth of the audience um because still like everything is on a flat line you know yeah. for it's, people it it's seems pretty hard for people to get good at this game i think with the resources available so it may like scare them off um i think dota the patches are driving the game in a direction where it's it should be easier to learn and it should be more friendly and welcoming i haven't like really seen what like the toxic behavior that's been like people have been complaining about in my mars is for me it looks like it's normal right like people come in the game people flame each other like it's part of the game at least in my perspective but obviously for a new player in the, in the new uh, moba thing i don't even know if dota is a mobile honestly but um it's like uh, probably not forgiving enough that way it's like 
Uh, some people don't want to play this because you need to be a team. It's a pretty tense team game. You can't really solo carry games and you can't really like play Dota without supports and all this stuff. So it's like a component. You need like all these things. And sometimes you may get in a game where no one wants to play this part and then it just comes and becomes a mess. And this is where that's probably what's, what's Dota. That's like Dota's problem just off the base. Uh, League of Legends, I, I think, I don't know much about the game at all, but I think it's just easier to play. Like, it's easier to get it's in there. It's super like, easy, definitely. I don't know if it's, like, easy as a game itself, like, in the competitive scene, but I think it, it's more welcoming and forgiving, and, like, the Riot does a good job of uh, promoting, like, good plays and, like, playing together and all this kind of stuff that Dota doesn't necessarily have right now. Um, but it should. I guess they should in, like have that kind of stuff i mean for me i don't really care but okay and before we let you go would you like to give any shout outs shout out to all my sponsors you know here you can see them you can do a quick pause if you're really interested and to hisense who's not on this jacket but they're also sponsoring us thank you so much so that was our teaser. thank you sir for your time and let's hope that this tournament would be easy for you and your team and you please like subscribe comment and share and wait for more videos to come